So about 15 years ago, Bremont kind of hit my, my, my radar. And it was a young man at the time, uh, Mike Pearson, uh, who if you don't know Mike Pearson, do yourself a favor, look this guy up. Uh, he is the one who introduced Bremont pretty much to the US, certainly to me. Um, he's now the president of Zodiac Watches, so give him a little shout out. Um, if you don't know Zodiac, figure it out. Uh, probably the best bang for the buck in the industry. But met with Mike and said, uh, why do I care? And he gave me to this day my favorite line about Bremont watches. He said, uh, Bremont wants you to wear their watches the way other brands only advertise. I like that. And I, and I, I loved that. So you get into the construction one. Uh, it's, it's very unique in the industry. Um, it's called Tip Trick Cases. Uh, I actually have a very old version it's like 06, yep. yeah. something like that. So this one's been around for a while. Um, hardened steel, uh, extra thick crystals, uh, even even the anti-reflective coating, it's like seven or eight layers of, of the coating. On each side. On each side, on each side yeah, yeah. Just ridiculously over-engineered. Um, Ryan's favorite is the Martin Baker series. Um, this one was literally designed to basically get ejected out of an airplane, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Uh, they actually have this video on their website uh, where it shows a guy, or a test dummy, should I say, uh, getting ejected out of one of their uh, injection seats. The, even the, the balance on the second yeah. stand is the little ejector it's pole. It's like a little pole. And actually, if you've ever seen the movie The Avengers, yep. right before the Hulk jumps on the jet, the guy pulls between his yep. legs, and that's, that's it. it. That's actually it. It's the real it, It's kind of fun, too. Uh, there's the MB1, 2, and 3. Yep. The only way you can get an MB1 is to have been ejected. Correct. Yes. <laughs> and it's a red barrel. Um, and uh -huh. by that, I mean basically the side of the case is going to be red instead of like orange or green, or I think they do like purple and blue now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the only really way to get that is to be ejected, which don't do that. So th the story of Bremont is the story of two brothers, uh, Nick and Giles, uh, last name English, you can't make that up. Yep, uh, <laughs> very British. <laughs> they, they grew up uh, kids of an RAF pilot, uh, retired. They, they grew up around airplanes, uh, restoring vintage aircraft, uh, uh, all our pilots. And unfortunately, uh, one year they went up, uh, uh, Nick was up with their father, Ewan, and they crashed. Um, uh, I think Giles was in like the next sortie and kind of saw the whole thing too. Yeah. But um, unfortunately their father passed away uh, in the incident and Nick spent the better part of a year in a hospital bed. Yeah, a lot of broken bones. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Giles went to see him every day and I believe at that point they owned a communications company, some sort of media company or something, something along yep. those lines. Um, but, but through that year, through extreme tragedy comes um, extreme fortitude sometimes and yep. they decided to pool their resources, sell their company, and follow their lifelong dream, which was bringing great watchmaking back to Great Britain. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it's, if, if you're a fan of horology, uh, a lot of the history of timekeeping uh, can be traced to, to Great Britain. Um, from, from Harrison to, to discovering longitude, yeah. uh, it's, to, to William Smith, to some of the modern watchmakers. Um, and they really wanted to bring a fine uh, uh, timekeeper back to, to Great Britain. So um, they start on their journey. Um, it's, it's kind of funny, mine's one of the older ones and you can kind of even tell that because it, um, it says made in Switzerland, where all the modern ones will say London now. Um, they've been able through the course of many, many years, many, many trials, uh, fulfill their dream really. Yeah. Um, they have what's called the wing in uh, uh, Henley on Thames. And uh, they've actually, with a few of their, their newer pieces, they've done their first in-house manufactured movement as well. So they've really completed uh, what they wanted to do. And um, I couldn't be prouder of the boys. Um, yeah. I, I, think, I, I think one of my favorite uh, uh, stories with, with Bremont was uh, when they were doing uh, The Kingsman. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Nick it, was actually in that movie. Yeah, no, it, it, so it, it, was, it was kind of early on. Not everybody was really aware of them. And it, it happened really organically. Um, Kingsman is, it just bleeds British. It's a very, very British movie. Yep. And they were looking for uh, the watch for these, these, these spies to wear. And, and this was a natural... Uh, 
uh, c connection between the two brands. And uh, so a lot, of, a lot of good wrist shots in the movie. Uh, Bremont definitely was heavily uh, uh, shouted out in the movie. And to the point where there's that one scene where uh, they're, they're all uh, holographically down the table. Uh, the back left is actually um, that Nick, Nick English. English. <laughs> <laughs> so he was actually in the movie. Um, unfortunately, in the second one, uh, Tag Hoyer kind of, there's monies involved and stuff like that. And, and, and but that I, I like it when it's organic. And yep. I think that was a, a, a real neat uh, uh, feather in the cap for these guys. So uh, we are Oliver Smith jeweler. Uh, we are in Scottsdale. Uh, we are in Colorado, uh, Aspen. If you yep. get a chance, absolutely, absolutely go to Aspen. Um, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, we have these watches new. We have them pre-owned. We buy, sell, trade. So uh, if you are in and around any of our locations, uh, Ron and I would love to meet you. Talk watches. Yep. Uh, that's kind of what we do.